In this tutorial, we'll look at port names and associations, default port routing, and how we choose a clock source. First, let's explore the MIDI information in iConfig. There are 64 MIDI ports allocated among the various physical and virtual devices. You have four DIN pairs, you have three device jacks, the USB jacks, and you have 16 virtual ports per USB jack. There is also the host jack, where you plug in your USB class compliant devices, and you can have up to eight of those for the host jack. If your MIDI devices support having multiple virtual ports, you can have up to four of those available to you via the USB host jack. But typically, you'll reduce this number to one so that you can maximize the number of USB MIDI peripherals you can plug in via the host jack and hub. There's also one physical Ethernet port and four virtual MIDI Ethernet ports underneath that. Now let's look at the port naming assignments. First of all, we have our four DIN ports, and those four DIN ports are available to us named as simply DIN 1, 2, 3, and 4. We can always change those names or the names of any of the ports to make them easier to use. You do this by clicking in the box and changing the name as we'll see later. You'll also notice that every port is bidirectional. Now let's scroll down and have a look at the USB device ports where we connect our iPads and PCs. The first device port, Jack 1, I have my iPad mini connected to. Underneath each of the device ports, you'll see that we have 16 virtual MIDI ports. So for the second USB device jack, I have a second iPad connected, and again, I have 16 virtual MIDI ports that I can address in a door or in iConfig using these port names which identify the physical port and the virtual port under that. The physical device for the PC or Mac connection is typically port 3, and again you have 16 virtual ports under that physical port, and these are named again according to the port number, and then the virtual port underneath that port number. Likewise, for the USB host port, you have 8 ports, no connected devices by default, and you have a series of port names named after the USB ports. Lastly, you have the Ethernet port and the four virtual ports under that for RTP MIDI. Here we're going to look at the default port routing for the various virtual ports that we've just seen. The ports we saw under USB device jack 1, for example, and likewise under USB device jack 2 appear here. You can also see that every one of the previous ports that we've just looked at is identified here in this section, and we can route between the ports, the host jack, the Ethernet jack, and the DIN ports as well. In this section, we have two panes, the source ports on the left and the destination matrix on the right. To select a destination, click to toggle so that it changes from gray to white or vice versa. On the left, we have all the source ports, for example, for device jack, one, and we're sending USB 1.1 to the first DIN jack. Two is going to the second DIN jack, three to the third, and four to the fourth by default. Five is going to device jack 25, six is going to device jack 35, seven to the first host jack port, eight to the next and so on as we work through each of the individual ports. Remember these are the defaults and you can change them to be whatever you would like. If we look at device jack 2 and the ports under there, you'll see they're routed in a similar fashion. If we look at device jack 3, again you can see some default routings for each of the virtual ports. We can use these to make connections inside our door as we'll see in a later tutorial. For each of the host jack ports, each port is connected to multiple destination ports at the same time. And that may be something you want to change if you don't want to send MIDI information to all of your connected devices at once. 
likewise for each of the ports under the host jack. Remember, these are where your MIDI peripherals are connected. The Ethernet ports, likewise, are sent to multiple destinations, giving you access to the Ethernet RTP MIDI information from within your door or other devices. And the DIN ports are also connected to multiple destinations by default. Again, you may wish to change this routing to suit your needs. Lastly, we're going to take a look at the default clock settings for the audio clock. As supplied, the iConnect MIDI has this set to be synchronized to the internal clock. Unless you have hardware clock sync, it is best to set this to a known clock source, such as the clock in your Mac or PC. To do this, simply choose the audio port 3 from the drop-down, and that will change the clock source. Once you have done so, Commit and reset these changes, which will restart your device. Confirm the action, and the device will reset. Once it is reset, you can reselect it in iConfig from the device dialog. Now, when we look at the clock settings, you'll see that it's now being synced from audio port 3.